guys? How are you all going? Welcome back to another Legal Studies video. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the role, well, basically, Australia's parliamentary structure. Now, remember, guys, parliament is where laws are made. It's Parliament is the supreme law-making body in Australia. Now, the courts can also make laws as well, but Parliament, their main role is to make laws, okay? Parliament is, is Australia's supreme law-making body. Now, at a federal level, there are two houses of Parliament, and when, it's, when there are two houses of Parliament, it's called a bicameral parliamentary structure. So at a federal level, our federal Parliament's located in Canberra, so Australia's capital city, um, at a federal level, the upper house is called the Senate, okay? So the upper house of parliament is called the Senate, and it's comprised of 76 seats. So 76 senators, 12 from each state and two from each territory. And what I mean by that is, well, basically in the Senate, there's 12 senators from Victoria, 12 from Queensland, 12 from WA, so Western Australia, 12 from South Australia, etc. Um, now... Our lower house of parliament at a federal level is called the House of Representatives. And the House of Representatives plays a crucial role in our lawmaking. Essentially, the House of Representatives is comprised of 151 seats, okay, 151 seats. And essentially, whichever political party has the most seats in the House of Representatives, they form the Government of Australia, okay? So, yeah, the House of Representatives is comprised of 100 of 151 seats, and basically each seat in the House of Representatives represents a different electoral division throughout Australia. So, for example, um, the seat of Higgins, the seat of Menzies, the seat of Hotham, the seat of Chisholm, they're all Victorian seats. There's also, for example, the seat of Cook from New South Wales, etc. So each of those 151 seats in the House of Representatives represents a different electoral division throughout Australia. And as I mentioned before, the political party which has the most seats in the House of Representatives, they form the Government of Australia. Now, there's what is known as front benches and back benches. So what are what is the difference between the two? So essentially front benches are members of parliament who have a portfolio. Whether they're whether they're a minister or a shadow minister a front bencher, front benches sit at the front of parliament and they have a portfolio. That is, they're either a minister or shadow minister. So for example, a minister might be, well, different ministers include, so for example, yeah, the attorney general, the treasurer, the prime minister, the minister of cyber securities and home affairs, or the minister for agriculture, for example. And there's also, for example, shadow ministers who are also front benches. So, for example, the shadow treasurer or the shadow attorney general or the shadow um, minister of housing or the shadow uh, or yeah, opposition leader as well, etc. Now, keep in mind as well, the political party which is in power, they sit to the right of the speaker. Okay, so the speaker in the House of Representatives, they sit at the front at the, at the top of you know of the parliament. The political party which is in power, they sit to the right of the speaker, whereas the political party which is in opposition, they sit the, to the left of the speaker. Now, keep in mind as well, when laws, when it comes time to actually making laws, basically a bill will get proposed, usually in the House of Representatives, and essentially when a bill gets proposed, um, if the majority of members of parliament in the House of Representatives vote yes to the proposed bill, it then progresses to the Senate, and if the majority of senators also vote yes to the bill, then it's the role of the Governor General, the Governor General, to give that bill royal assent. Once the Governor General gives the bill royal assent, it becomes legislation, so it becomes law. Whether it's a new Act of Parliament or whether it's an amendment to an, to a previous existing, uh, you know, a previous Act. Once the Governor General gives royal assent, that bill becomes legislation. Now, the role of the Governor General is actually they represent the King. Okay, so our current Australia's current head of state is King Charles the Third. Used to be Queen Elizabeth the Second up until her passing on the eighth of September two thousand twenty-two. She was actually Australia's head of state for seventy years, so she was the head of the Commonwealth for seventy years. But essentially, our current head of state is King Charles the Third. And essentially, the Governor-General represents the King, so King Charles III, 
And if a bill gets a majority of yes votes in both the House of Representatives and the Senate, then it's the role of the Governor-General to give that bill royal assent. And our current Governor-General is um, David Hurley, so the Honourable David Hurley. He's been the Governor-General of Australia since the 1st of July 2019, so four years. But, yeah, but it's his role to give um, a bill royal assent once it, be once it passes both houses successfully. Now, keep in mind as well, also the role of the Governor-General is also to... The Governor-General also, they have the responsibility of actually swearing in a new cabinet when they're elected. So, for example, in May 2022, when Anthony Albanese and his... Well, when Anthony Albanese won the election, he and his cabinet were actually sworn into power by David Hurley, and that includes yeah, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, Treasurer Jim Chalmers... Um, Claire O'Neill, Minister of Cybersecurity and Home Affairs, um, for ex Mark Dreyfus, our attorney, our attorney general, they were all sworn into power by David Hurley, our Australia's Governor General. And the reason why we have a Governor General is because Australia is a constitutional monarchy. Even though we are an independent nation, Australia is still a constitutional monarchy. So we're not a republic; we're a monarchy, and as a result. The Governor General represents the Crown, who is currently King Charles III, since the 8th of September 2022. Um, and also at a state level, there are two Houses of Parliament as well. So at an upper house, we've got the, the Legislative Council, and at a lower house, there's the Legislative Assembly. Now, five of the six states have a bicameral parliamentary structure. There's only one state out of the six which has a unicameral parliamentary structure, so only one House of Parliament, and that's Queensland. Queensland is the only state in Australia with one House of Parliament and not two. Queensland actually abolished their upper House of Parliament, so their Legislative Council, in 1922, so yeah, a century ago. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so... In Australia, and pretty much all over the world, Parliament is the supreme lawmaking body. Um, and it's their role to make laws and, you know, to debate and scrutinise bills. But um, the political party which is in power, they sit to the right of the Speaker, and the opposition sits to the left of the Speaker in the House of Representatives. And also, keep in mind as well, I forgot to mention, keep in mind as well, um, if... So, basically, as there's 151 seats in the House of Representatives... Um, in order to form a majority government, the, a political party must actually get, must win at least 76 seats. If they win the majority of seats, but it's less than 76, they form what is known as a minority government. So if you know, a political party wins an election, but they don't actually win at least 76 seats, they win, for example, 70 seats or 68 seats, they might have still won the majority, but as a, they might have still won the majority of seats in the House of Representatives, but if they don't actually win at least 76, they form what is known as a minority government and not a majority government. And if a political party forms a minority government and not a majority government, they might have to rely on the support of crossbenchers to actually get bills through. So, for example, crossbenchers include members of or independent parliamentary members, so members members of parliament who don't actually belong to a political party. It could be Greens, me members of the Greens party, for example, or another minority party, but essentially crossbenchers are members of parliament who don't belong to either Labor or Liberal. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Take care and have a good day. Bye.